officially live welcome to the show everybody just give us a second to officially open up this portal uh first of all i just want to acknowledge everyone if you're watching this this is a very uh, beautiful episode where we have some amazing guest speakers today it's an honor to have them on the show i am humbled out and grateful to have these amazing people to speak and share their perspectives about some uh, somewhat of the things that are happening right now and some of the major events that are occurring within our society and uh, what's coming up for us as a collective. But before we get into all of that, uh, let's first start off by opening up this portal and beginning the ceremony for a quick little drop-in meditation. So if you're watching the replay, uh, take this time to kind of relax, tune in, check in with yourself. And as we begin the meditation, uh, take this time to really ground yourself because I know there's a lot of energy kind of going around the collective. And um, if you've been feeling triggered or if you've been working through some shadow, take this time to kind of just feel into that. So if you want to just take in a deep breath as you relax, inhaling into your nose. And slowly exhaling out through your nose. Relaxing your forehead, tuning into your body. Taking in another deep breath, inhaling in through your nose. Relaxing a little deeper as you exhale out through your nose. Taking this time to just feel and connect with yourself. We're taking one more deep breath, inhaling in through the nose. And as you breathe this breath in, let it expand your lungs, let it expand your energy, and let it relax you just a little bit more. And then you can slowly exhale out through the nose. And as we officially open up this portal, I want to take this time to acknowledge all of you behind the screen to being willing to uh, sit with us and hear our perspectives. I want to give my acknowledgement and my gratitude to these two beautiful souls with me in which they will introduce themselves in a second. Uh, but today's episode, today's quest, today's portal, we're talking all about pride, uh, which is a uh, character weakness that we've been talking about on social media and that I feel is really relevant to what's happening right now uh, within the states and essentially what's happening uh, as all these riots are occurring and um, as a lot of separation is occurring. So pride is the theme of today's quest, but we will also be mentioning a little bit about what it means to be privileged and our responsibility in that world. We'll go a little deeper into what's happening with racism and our perspectives on it when it comes to the riots that are happening in LA. We currently are in the LA portal, so we have this firsthand experience and then we'll kind of tap a little deeper into personal truth and discernment and knowing how to discern our truth and how to respond instead of reacting. So if you've been feeling triggered or if you feel the anger and you've been feeling that energy up in today's portal, we'll talk a little more about that and how to kind of use that energy. We'll also be answering some questions at the end that you guys uh, behind the screen have sent uh, to us. Uh, so we'll be acknowledging those questions and kind of tuning in from there. But with that being said, uh, let me just pass this uh, to these two beautiful souls uh, to, for them to share themselves a little bit and maybe introduce yourself. So I'll start with uh, this beautiful goddess to my right. Um, if you want to just share a little bit about yourself, kind of like maybe a little bit about your background and just how you're showing up to your face. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm River and uh, I'm a healer, medicine woman. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do like uh, 30 different things. Um, <laughs> What the? I oh yeah, I do massage, yoga, uh, tai chi, like shiatsu, um, um, art, uh, yeah, healing and things like that. Um, and what was the other thing? I think that's that's a perfect. Oh, that was it. Space. Okay. Yeah, I just want to add to that. Like River has been on this journey with me for over a year, and when we connected, it was this beautiful portal where she's taught me a lot about Reiki. She's taught me a lot about yoga, healing, and she offers a really powerful meta perspective of understanding things in a more spiritual way and offering the collective um, an approach to understand our emotions and understand healing. So I'm really happy to have her perspective here on the show because she'll bring a lot of light uh, into a lot of these topics. 
weeks. And then, of course, I have my soul brother right here, Wolfpack all the way. <laughs> you want to share a little bit about yourself and uh, is, some uh, of your experiences? My name is Gustavo, a uh, fellow human here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, basically, I'm just uh, on the path. I'm on my own path. My heart guides me every day. My heart guided me to this individual here and to, to River. And uh, so we're here. We've been blessed to open up this portal and talk about... Um, talk about basically healing i think in a way that uh that could be maybe a little different for the world in yeah. the next few years yeah. and um yeah, yeah i think uh we all have the ability to do it anywhere we are at so i've been doing it on my path and yeah. it gets deep and it has its ups and downs and it's cool you know but we all have the journey within and uh yeah. so yeah i love it brother and thank you for sharing that adding to that me and gustavo met about like a year ago a little over a year ago and i just want to highlight you know this soul brother has been doing so much inner work not only with plant medicines but with meditation with plant-based living i know you made a huge kind of transformation over the past year of really healing the the i would say the toxic masculine energy that dominates our society currently so i want to acknowledge him for doing a lot of the inner work healing a lot of karmic cycles and he offers a really powerful perspective for a lot of the masculine figures out here when it comes to anger and aggression and having bias and judgment so i really um, i'm grateful to have his perspective and have river's perspective here because they offer a lot of insight and help they're going to help us kind of see a different way of looking at the surface level manifestation of this collective shadow especially with everything that's happening so thank you it really means a lot uh, to have you guys here and of course i'm here i just kind of like moving the energy and sharing my personal experience but with that being said, I mean, the first thing I really wanted to dive into and open up the space was talking about what it means to be privileged. And uh, the purpose of, of me mentioning this is because us sharing perspectives about racism, perspectives about social injustice, us sharing perspectives about pride, you know, I, I would love to give the viewers some value about our individual perspectives of where we're coming from and also relating to you guys behind the screen. Um when it comes to kind of being privileged, what I mean is that currently in my experience, I have the blessing and the opportunity to have a home here and have, have safety and have reassurance and have food available to me and have my parents here. And uh, with this opportunity, it has given me the time and space to, to read and to learn and educate myself. Um, it also offers me the space to not necessarily be embedded and woven into what's happening, you know, in society and what the, the racism that people are experiencing are the reflections of myself. So because I'm not necessarily embedded in that and experiencing it firsthand, I offer different value. I offer a different perspective. Um, and what I would like to kind of lead into with that is that being privileged to me means that we have an opportunity uh, to share our voice and to share our truth because I have this space and time to self-inquire, uh, to reflect, to learn, to research that others might not, right? Other minorities might not have the tools or the information or the opportunities that I have and that we might have um, with these uh, blessings that we have been given in this lifetime. But what for me, what that means is that there's a level of responsibility uh, on my part that offers me the space to learn and to educate and to to give and provide myself the resources to share these insights and to do the inner work so that we can have a different perspective on it so i am choosing to be vulnerable and admit you know i'm very privileged in my life and i have a lot of beautiful blessings here and i i openly use that as an opportunity for me to be courageous and to learn and to share because it's it's easy sometimes uh, for us to hide and for us to ignore and for us to say, well, that doesn't necessarily affect me at, like front hand, right? Like this, in some ways, like these riots, you know, and, and what's happening in society doesn't necessarily really affect me to the level where like I need to do something. I could literally just sit here and just see it and be like, oh, whatever, and kind of continue my life and like kind of just read and I like, do my thing, you know, and, work around it right and uh, uh and that's kind of like right like being privileged offers that opportunity right the option i guess to do that but i guess the path i'm choosing and what i want to share with you guys is if you are in that space if you're in the upper middle class um privileged kind of space uh i am choosing to inspire you guys and empower you guys to share your voice to do your research to 
to learn your history and to share yourself, use your platform on social media and uh, use opportunities like these to, to share a different perspective, to share your perspective because your perspective matters and you have a voice. And because we have this space and time to self inquire, we can use this as a way to serve society and to offer our unique uh, value. And me studying philosophy, I, I add the value in today's portal of asking questions and offering a, a meta perspective in that way. But let me, uh, if you guys want to add to that, like about being privileged, maybe some things about your life or how that kind of re- uh, is relevant to you, please feel free to take some yeah. questions. Yeah, I, think I, could, <laughs> you know, I could take that. that so I think one of the first things that like needs to be kind of clear, it doesn't need to be, maybe should be clear when we're having these discussions is that, uh, there's multi it's like multifaceted. So there's like a lot of people, especially right here with COVID and what's happening, a lot of people are in different experiences and there could be like confusion about where to take the experience next, especially mm-hmm. since we're not having to go to work. We're not having to show up to a system that's like, you know, we look forward to Saturday. I mean, some of us are, and we appreciate right. like the people who are right. working. And I think there's a lot of opportunity, you know, for that to be positive um so i think that's first is like right, right checking in because i think we all have to sort of start this conversation with this place of unconditional listening and love right. you know open-mindedness open-mindedness and, and yeah and then i guess the second thing that comes up for me is considering um the word privilege and, and in what ways the privilege shows up um I think, like you said, a lot of us are naturally in this position where a lot of us have a bed to sleep at night. Right. A lot of us right. have like friends that care about mm-hmm. about us. A lot of us have a cell phone to check in with people. Mm-hmm. A lot of us, and then the question starts to become the privilege to to what to buy things that we don't need on the shelf to mm-hmm. buy certain. You know, then right, we, right, then the conversation right. you could the the, the the privilege conversation can then go many ways there too. You know, so then um yeah i don't want to move too quickly but that's kind of where i'm feeling you know and i mm-hmm. think like i like i may have mentioned in the beginning about the heart and we were talking everybody right now is asking i think within we're at being asked to like step up to the heart space mm-hmm. and like yeah. listen because for example i make music and right now the music aspect has been helping me like i think that's what i'm like this is what i need to give to the world and support my brothers and sisters and everything oh. that they do because if you find yourself in a position where you're doing doing something, right. then it's probably because it makes sense for you. Right. And sure. the last thing you need is your brothers and sisters turning their backs on you, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, yeah, that's kind yeah. of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. If I could add value real quick. Um, you know, when it comes to, to that topic, I like how you bring up the awareness of us having uh, safety, you know? Like, and, you know, I had someone mention like, my experiences growing up was that I had trust in like the police system. Like I kind of knew that like if I would call them or if I needed them, like they would kind of be there for me opposed to like a minority who doesn't have that trust or feels like, you know, that this, these cops or these police, you know, won't necessarily back me up or don't really have the best interests of me at hand. And Especially I, if it's their life. Like, yeah, support, exactly. You know? Right. You know, it's, like, like, well, it's my life. I was like, yeah. Right. The value of a human life when it comes to these uh, social kind of systems and the experience that I've had, you know, I've had safety in that, you know, but I think, you know, when it comes to the heart chakra, it's about us having compassion and learning and putting ourselves in the shoes of other reflections and other people who don't have that, you know, don't have that privilege, you know, of having that safety. And I think that's a good space to kind of like step into for all of us behind the screen who who have had that safety and who have had that experience is it starts first with compassion and understanding. And before I lead into the next one, I would like to offer if you have some perspective to share on that. You know? Yeah, I was actually, it's funny that you say perspective because I was going to say, I think maybe it's not even so much the word privilege as it is just people having different perspectives because privilege Mm. would mean that there's like you know some hierarchy some hierarchy going on which don't get me wrong like it it exists i'm not saying it doesn't i'm not saying that these people people in all these different situations aren't experiencing something but i think that it's everybody's different perspective and everybody's different perspective is needed Mm. to make the image a whole yeah Yeah, to basically hold it together yeah Yeah. so I think you know understanding privilege is really just understanding people's perspectives you know like okay Mm. 
and just coming coming from where they're feeling in their heart coming from what they need at the base mm. and then like seeing where they are from there because mm. some people are happy you know need a like beverly hills 10 room yeah. mansion and that's where they are and some people need a sandwich and it's like <laughs> and, yeah wow it just affects so many there like as i was saying it's like so multifaceted that you kind of have to like mm. understand that you're you're dealing with billions of different mm. uh, you know perspectives and views and on everything wills, yeah and free wills exactly oh. and what people choose to do with their privilege or lack thereof right yeah right okay yeah yeah thank you for sharing that because that leads me into the the next phase of um, a lot of the collective is experiencing a lot of reaction. And before I really expand the portal of, of what pride is, um, when it comes to like a lot of us who are perhaps privileged, right? We're on social media. We have the opportunity or the perspective to have social media. We're on our phones, you know, we have the web and we're seeing all these videos, you know, upsetting videos, disturbing videos of police brutality, of rights, of people you know like choosing as they say to fight to fight for their rights and like step up and face you know a lot of the injustice and there is a lot of anger there's a lot of reaction and um when it comes to that level of, of energy and emotion how can we like approach that how can we approach that consciously how is that how can we use this anger this uh a passion you know to to actually inflict change you know what what's your guys' perspective on like the reaction the initial reaction that's happening in the collective right these riots are happening because there's a lot of anger and people like we've been saying like uh they they want to be heard they want to be seen so they that kind of reactive space they go out and they and they're fighting for for a cause right they're standing up for a cause so how, do, how what's your guys' reaction to that what's your perspective on that is there another way to approach it is this inflicting change or yeah. i want to kind of like open up that portal as well so yeah i think i could take Sweet. take that yeah um i think that literally sometimes when i see the people that that riot mm -hmm. in the last few times that we've had this these these things happen mm -hmm. my heart just reaches out and i'm in gratitude to them because i am not in that position I'm not in a position where I feel like I like the best thing for me to do is riot, but I understand when I see them, there is something there mm -hmm. to be seen and to be heard. And I thank God for them because if it wasn't for people like that, willing to just push the comfort just a little bit, like my mom, maybe putting her out there, we had a conversation and, <laughs> and she, she mentioned that she mentioned something along the lines of, Oh, well, what does it make a difference if you ruin a lamp? And I said, exactly what does it make a difference like huh. why not circle around the place where they're rioting and like you know like let it happen because obviously there's like an imbalance somewhere mm. and so I, at first i thank god for them because i'm just like wow mm. and i just then i go to holding a space and then i go to thinking about how i can like in my life you know obviously i might be i consider how my privilege is involved in that and obviously i've had um but the privilege then gets to talking about like on the outer, like your dependency on outer things. And, huh. and truly, I think the, the feeling is within like your ability to, to spread peace to people and to go through your own emotions too. you know, right. use anger. I think that's what we're anger is anger on the low end could be destructive, but anger on the high end is empowerment. Mm -hmm. So right. it's just like, take that and like, beware, not, not beware, but just know that maybe your anger is because something felt that, it was done to you you know and now right. you're empowering because you because you could do something to them right but think about it do you really want to mm -hmm. and i want to support my brothers that think so because i haven't been through some of the things that probably mm -hmm. they're experiencing you know and that's kind of where i'm at right, right? Yeah, yeah. gratitude yeah, yeah. I gratitude to today, uh... <laughs> i want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's willing to go uh to these riots and willing to stand up in this way and put their in a way their life on the line and uh risk themselves to stand for something because i feel like the highlight is, is it's a symbolism they're standing for equality they're they're representing change that needs to happen in society and uh um it reminds me a lot i was doing some research um on the 1960s and the racism that was occurring back then and when martin luther king was taking a stand to speak for his people and uh when malcolm x was also here and they had two different perspectives right you know one held the uh, perspective of peaceful writing to be more effective right martin luther king said don't don't fight back you know like just show the world that we're standing up but not in a way where we're fighting creating like a, a civil war in, in a way but 
Malcolm X had a different perspective. He said, no, fight back. You know, like you need to defend yourself. You need to, don't, don't take this, uh, don't just take it from them, like fight back. So you have these two like figures in history that had kind of different approaches to the same thing, right? They were both wanting the same thing, which was peace, which was equality, which was ending the social division, the division that was being curated in society. So I, what I wanted to add was like, what's, uh, what's your perspective on like peaceful writing versus um, kind of like blowing up cars and throwing things. And I wanted to first share, um, I, I, I hold the, I hold the perspective that I feel like there's a value in both. Definitely. There's symbolism in both, but I was reading this article that talked about how peaceful writing is more effective because when sometimes we approach the writing, that's more, um, action, more kind of like chaos driven. It kind of does the opposite effect because then we have these people watching behind the screen and it, it kind of it instigates like chaos and the people want them to stop. And then they uh, sometimes go to the leader and say, you need to stop this. And right now our leader is Trump. And like they might favor that. They might favor what he has to say because they, people are looking for order. People are looking for just stability. So sometimes it has the opposite effect uh, of actually creating more chaos and uh, not necessarily having the, what we want to happen, which was, which is a symbolism. So in the article I was reading and talked about how peaceful writing is more effective because the the intention, right, is to get media coverage, is for us to have this shared globally and have people see like what's happening so that they could um, understand and learn and reflect. And and then when it comes to shifting the the system, the legislative system, then they could vote and we could change the change a different way, have a different way of governing ourselves, have different approaches, different systems, right? And uh, sometimes when we have these chaotic, uh, or what could create more chaos, it, it does the opposite effect uh, in, in some cases. Uh, well, that's kind of my perspective. I guess I hold the, the value of more peaceful writing. I feel like because the essence is being a symbol, right? It's holding a symbol. And when you see police like shooting and, and harming these people who aren't doing anything, like that creates more of this, like something needs to happen. Like they're not doing anything. It kind of goes back when the, in the 1960s when, you know, people were seeing this and they're like, yo, this isn't right. And then people's minds started to shift when having this like biased racist mindset they started to see more equality. They started to see like, yo, like, why are we doing this? You know, they, they started to reflect and think opposed to what, if they're fighting back and they're like, why, you know, like they need to stop this, you know? Um, but that's kind of my perspective. I would love to kind of pass it on to you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I actually, I wanted to speak on something a second ago as well that leads into the peaceful writing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think it's important to like see what Gustavo was saying, especially like the feeling of peace is coming from within the people mm. who feel the need to riot. Maybe uh, Tristan, you asked where to start. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could all start by seeing where exactly the, our anger is coming from. If it is from a past story that we're holding or is it actually, mm. you know, something about what's currently happening. Right. Definitely. And then yeah. I think that, um, I think that that would like help everybody move forward although acknowledging all the people who are out there because i think that if you are out there you're meant to be there you're it's a it's a more of an awareness of what's going on mm -hmm. than anything else like just the fact that people are rioting brings our awareness that there's something there's something up right you know it's right. not like we all need to dive into that it's not like you know it's not anything other than that it's just like okay mm -hmm. let's everybody be aware here oh, that yeah. something's needing um, attention can, can i add it like yeah. can we like uh when it comes to like i like how you said not everyone kind of needs to go to writing and like there sometimes you know there's this like you need to write you need to go out there and you need to stop hiding and you need to go and put yourself out there and there's sometimes this like aggressive energy when it comes to people kind of doing it mm -hmm. um can we kind of relieve that pressure for everyone behind the screen like kind of letting them know that this isn't the only approach to making a difference and being heard that mm. writing and going out there in the physical is one approach that is effective and it's, you know, yeah. shout out to everyone doing it, but there's also right. different approaches and uh, different ways, like just awareness in itself is effective. And, uh, you know, I think it's about finding your purpose, finding how you can add value and you can instantly get change, you know, just even talking about it, mentioning it on social media is effective. Sometimes just having conversations about it and like, yeah. I think uh, last thing I share is uh, I feel the most important thing, and I always come back to this. It's always that inner transformation. And I always hold the 
I always hold the, the the quote that changed my life when I was 18. I was really, you know, revolutionary in my town. I was like, we gotta act crazy. We gotta do things, you know? I was like gonna get guns. I was investing in like a Jeep, you know, bulletproof. I was yeah. like in this really like revolutionary yeah. joy band as my say. Uh, but what helped me, I saw this quote that I was like kind of just like clicked, you know, when you have those moments where you're just like, oh, you know, it really helped me self-inquire. It says um that to bring you know uh to bring peace to the world. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it says uh, okay i gotta remember I remember. Good, I remember it says uh the only way to bring peace to the world is to bring peace to yourself mm. and you can't change the world until you change yourself you know and uh it, it's it's all this inner work like you in order for you to create change you, you're mm. not going to create change by trying to change other people because right. you mm. can't control other people you know sometimes we have this instant need to want to go and, and preach and like and and riot and like go and tell people you need to stop doing this you need to start being this you need to start doing that but when i was younger i was really into that i was really into like just preaching and like sharing what needs to happen and yeah, like this is what you need to get to right yeah. and i learned that well it actually it starts with myself it starts with me really understanding what that means and me developing that compassion that peace me becoming the difference that i want to see in society shout out to gandhi yeah, and uh so um i feel like that's what i always hold is that like the number one thing we can do is just go within ourselves and i'll speak more about that in a little bit but i want to pass it to my brother real quick yeah i think um well let's see my what, what was my first my train of thought was um you know, I think I can personally say coming from my family, there's been situations where probably the racist stuff has come up mm. and it's within my lines, like it's within my blood, mm. like the racism. I feel like I've been in situations where I've seen family members and I've myself been triggered by it. Like I'm starting, I certain, I start having certain thoughts where I'm right, like, right. maybe I should do this because of that. And it's totally like from a place of just like, mm. just like obviously like some fear based stuff that you heard heard as a kid yeah yeah yeah. um so i think there's ways to step up and you have to be able to voice it like i think the aggressiveness comes from a place of panic and instability to be mm -hmm. honest and pushing okay, yeah, yeah. and if you can't respect someone's free will then we're gonna just end up in the same right kind of you know if, if you like here's place. here's my problem <laughs> can i express this to you are you willing to help me i appreciate your help in any way like that's the kind of conversations you know and then people are gonna be like hey, you know what you know what? i will go do that mm -hmm. you know Right, and then right. secondly, the point I wanted to make was, I think right now, I mean, just scrolling through Instagram, I, I you know, I've seen pictures of people holding hands in solidarity, like uh, protecting officers, protecting I've people, seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and right now we're having this experience, like you said, to go within and without. Right. So white people are having this opportunity, color, any color, we're having this opportunity to come together and mm. see like, look, remember this one time where a black person was like this and we got in front of him? Huh. remember this one time when there was a police officer and we like protected them huh. so like we're bringing that experience what do i want to see right now i'm in this position where like this is happening and yeah you can feel peace you mm -hmm. can like but then you can create the new thing that everybody else is seeing within yourself yeah. like you know i'm here um and if you're there like beautiful but you can do yeah. it you can yeah, do it in yeah, so yeah. many ways like expressing yeah. your voice creating music huh. starting conversations yeah. opening the door like we saw this beautiful lady that served us that she impacted my entire day like wow. she served me coffee and like she gave me extra agave and it was just like she was super sweet so obviously i felt the support from everything she's like i i hear everything out there but right now i'm here for you and you're here for me mm. and it was just like we're gonna bring stableness to this thing by sharing the love you know mm -hmm. oh. That's so beautiful, man. The, the, if I can share. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Like just the little things that really impact us and start to change our mindset on people and life. Because I feel like sometimes we hold this idea that everyone is just evil or like the world's just like fucked, you know, there's no hope for anybody. And sometimes we might get into that nihilistic mindset of like, man, like, man, you know, it's, where's the hope here? And, mm -hmm. and I, I like to hold this space. There's this, this show that has, changed my life totally kind of like radically shifted my mindset and it's this it's anime you know it's an anime but like uh has so much truth to it it's called naruto and uh it's such a great show if you haven't seen it later i thought you were gonna say avatar, gonna say avatar. Next, okay okay that's another <laughs> show that's another, i will mention avatar avatar and naruto um two like <laughs> transformational shows but let me first start with naruto and the reason i bring up naruto is because in the show Naruto, um, I, I, I like kind of looking into the entire kind of show, but they talk about the cycle of hatred 
And the cycle of hatred works like this. Say like we use examples of like a gang, you know, say like uh, one gang kills someone's brother in another gang. And that, you know, person is like my brother and he wants to seek revenge. So he goes and kills the other gang's brother. And then that guy is like, now I'm hurt. Now I didn't go seek revenge. And he kills his cousin. And then now he's even more hurt. So he goes back and kills someone else. So you can see it. It's like, it's this never ending. It's always going to be revenge. It's always going to be anger. It's always going to be this cycle of hatred that's never going to stop until one group or until they find like the compatible, they understand each other. So in Naruto, there's these two clans, right? The Uchiha clan, which is basically like the Uchiha clan. And then there's a, the Senzu clan. And they've always been at war like this. These two sides have always been awarded from generations to reincarnations. And it was not until this one person, this one kid who just, he believed, he believed in the power of compassion that he never gave up on his dream. He never gave up on people. And this kid, Naruto, like he was able to always see the good in people. And that's not to bypass the truth and the reality of, of anger and then death and like what was happening, but he was able to always see that there was hope in the world. So this kid literally through his heart and through his compassion, he was able to kind of like create community. He always had people around him. He saw that his power, his power was in the people around him, was through his friends, was through his, the people that he cared about. And he, he used that as strength to keep him going. And what he did was he was able to persuade two of like the most, I guess you can say, evilest people, two people that were just so far gone, that were so into hatred, that they just wanted revenge. He was able to speak with them and, and share with them that there's still hope in the world, that there's still goodness in the people's hearts and that in order for us to break the cycle of hatred it starts right now it starts with us internally making that choice to find compassion in the world which doesn't mean and you can see in the show doesn't mean that we're not going to fight doesn't mean we're not going to stand up but doesn't mean we're just going to sit back and just be bypassing and saying you know peace and love and let things kind of play out like of course not he fought he fought and he stood up and he continued to believe but the thing with naruto was that when he fought he fought because he in his heart he was with his people and he believed in it and he would always just instigate instead of just like killing you know like he would fight and he would speak to them he would be like, you need to see it this way he would see their heart and he would the number one thing i want to I want to emphasize on and the last thing i share in this story is that he never gave up on people and that was something i really i valued a lot in this character was he never gave up on people he never gave up on sasuke he never gave up on obito he never gave up on pain and literally pain in that episode like i won't if you haven't seen i won't spoil it but like he was like the epitome of revenge and anger and he was like he was like you you didn't you wouldn't think he was able to change but he spoke to him and he shared that there is hope in our generation and his generation that there will be peace and he was able to persuade and show pain that there is healing that there is a, a light still available and uh i feel like the same is correlated in our experience in this reality that we are the hope and our generation is 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 the hope is the light so show others by your example by being the example of light being the example of compassion by showing through our actions and not heading to the cycle of hatred because what i wanted to underlie this whole story was that when we react with anger and when we just go out and we don't necessarily sit with our emotion and sit with anger and sit with why this is coming up for us why this is mm. triggering us and like okay why am i getting triggered why is there's all this energy and we just want to go out and just you know ride and like fight um, that's that in a way is sometimes adding to the cycle of hatred because in, in like we're kind of using pride to fight pride we're using fire to fight fire and mm -hmm. we're using anger to fight anger because even in the sides of you know racism even in the sides of people who are like causing uh this um there is anger there there is there, they're also because wanting to be heard because, because of the like yeah, there's a privilege like, right like, like oh, uh, you have something that i don't have mm -hmm. well, right right and, and also and, in yes. reacting we can lose sight of the purpose of things yeah. like we react so hard that we forget why we're why, like, why we don't we're even, do, like, do we need to be doing COVID. this like everybody's right. gathering what's the why were we scared <laughs> to be three people in a room the other day right and now uh, everyone's like coming together yeah supposedly social distancing but like whatever comments <laughs> i also think that that everybody like if you know it's just like in the body like you uh, know when you get a rash you know you don't go to the hospital you know but you get a rash and you're like okay there's this gathering on my face uh, here what is this you know and you you respond to it and you're you you integrate yeah. it and you're like okay 
you know, what do I need? Do I need to do something about this rash? Yeah. Can I drink water? Will it go away? Right. You know, right. and I think we're seeing like things kind of happen right now. It's like, okay, huh. let's just like kind of take a look at it without just immediately rushing to the, you know, rushing ER. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you know? Right. That's, like, that's a really good analogy, yeah. right? You don't necessarily I mean, just rush straight to the hospital when something comes up in your body. The, right? the earth is a body. You know, when people gather, it's the same concept as when, you know. Oh, yeah. Some kind of gathering. Happens, yeah, exactly. And it's like, okay, yeah. wow, there's some stagnation. Right, exactly. That's there's why some when you said about yeah. it's coming up to be, right. to be acknowledged. To be looked at. It's like, why am I having this rash? Did I... You know. And when we can support the white blood cells can support right? exactly when we can come and just support right. quickly, exactly. just support, just quickly support. Don't don't, don't kill latch anybody. On don't to yeah. It. We just come around and we solidate. We see what they gotta say. You know, yeah. and be like yo, look, let's go. Yeah. We can get you like some jujitsu lessons. Like, <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go get the exactly. But, like, the right give them the you. space for a little bit because really the material thing is not that important. Mm-hmm. and that's the point i think that's what they're kind of like the material is just kind of the effect mm-hmm. of insurance. what we're all feeling yeah insurance is a whole other conversation to yeah. have but like yeah yeah if i i feel like this is a great transition into the next kind of topic which is pride and uh i feel pride is so uh essential here because for me racism uh, inequality and uh all this separation really stems from pride and what pride is, pride is basically like when you feel superior. It's this false superior complex that manifests in individuals that feel like there's a hierarchy. It creates separation. It creates a hierarchy. It says, I'm better than you because of my color of my skin, because of how much money I make, because of the car I drive, because of my social status on social media, because of the job I have. All that is pride and all that because of what i know how smart i am i went to this school ivy league college like all that is pride and pride uh, i feel like pride is kind of what a lot of the society is uh, like um, cultivated on right you know and uh, pride is kind of almost like uh, accepted in our society you know it's, it's almost like normalized right you, you know and what i mean by that and what i want to share is like some examples of pride and for you guys to reflect and notice this in yourself is the first thing you look at when you go on social media, most people's, my at times reaction, the first people I I look at when I go on another account is their followers and like their likes. And that was like my mindset, you know, and that's what a lot of people's mindset. And you could admit to yourself that you might have been there at one point, you know, you judge people based on like, right. right, You know, and you go on people's accounts and you see that, and that might be your first initial reaction is that you might judge them based on how many followers they have or what their social media is like. And that might influence your perception of them. If they have a hundred K followers, you might be more open to receive their insight. Oh, this person is, he's validated, you know, you might have a little blue check mark and like this person, okay. He, he has something to say, or she has something to say opposed to if they have like a hundred followers and you're like, all right, you know, what is this person? This is really pretty important, you know? (laughs) That is pride. That is creating separation within ourselves. The second thing that happens a lot and that you might even have experiences is like when you see someone, you see someone who drives a Ferrari and they pull up, you know, and then you're like, wow, you know, this person's important. This person has like status, you know, and you see someone pull up in a a 2002 Honda Civic and you're like, he's rich, boy. <laughs> and, 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 we, we, <laughs> and a lot of times we we, we 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 create separation because of people's status right because of how they dress because of the job they had because of their social media status um, um because of the careers they have you know because of who they are right like we're especially in the spiritual community like the mainstream society has a lot of judgment if this person's spiritual if they have dreadlocks of how they dress automatically they're hippies they are cool, man. But a society separates judgment, us. You know, it's a judgment, you know, and it creates this separation of their hippies or they're just stoners, you know, or they're just druggies, you know. So mm. there's so much separation that happens in society because of pride. And, and racism is 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 created because of the pride of society. So the reason I want to bring this up is because if we really kind of, for me, if we really want to see the meta perspective of how to conquer racism, you know, and why they're, why we're writing, you know, my question as, as a philosophy, in a philosophical way is like, well, what is the solution here? And what do we really want? You know, like when we show up to these riots, when we show up and, and we want to fight for something like, well, the meta perspective of it is like, well, what does that actually look like? 
right? You know, what are we actually looking to achieve in these rides? You know, like, what is it that we're really looking for and the solution of it? Like, are we looking for, you know, like a new system? Are we looking for more people to share about these topics? Like, what does it actually look like yeah. instigating evolution and consciousness to overcome this racism? And for me, the core of it is pride. How do we evolve from pride which is the core of it and and for me i feel like well it first starts with us acknowledging the pride within ourselves because you might not be racist but you might still be judging people based on their class based on their social media based on like these other factors which is pride so in a way we're contradicting ourselves by going and standing up for these you know black lives matter um for these is, is activist groups when inside we're still also separating ourselves in these other ways. So I feel like, you know, for me, it's seeing the meta perspective of understanding how we create separation in society and, and doing that inner work, because that's really, for me, the solution and the healing, you know, if we really want to create a society where there's equality for all beings, it starts with each individual seeing that within themselves, because if not, we're going to keep going in circles. There's always going to be some imbalance if we don't go inside within ourselves. But I want to open up that space. Um, if you guys have some things to share, maybe things uh, more on pride or how it's come up in your life or how you've healed from it or still healing, because I'm still working through it. I, like I admit, and I'm vulnerable, like I, I still notice it. I, but the thing is, like I notice it. I I'm like, oh, that's pride. Like when I, you know, look scrolling through my feed and I have that judgment of, like, oh no, that, that's pride. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing you. Or when I feel like, yeah. And the last story I share, like even with like relationships, when I had this thing that came up for me the other day, you know, when I kind of saw my ex's mom and then I had this huge thought of like, if, like what would it look like if I would have a conversation with her? Like it was just in passing, but automatically I was like, man, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna build my brand and like I'm gonna I'm gonna show them like almost like seeking validation, seeking this approval of like I'm gonna show them that I'm doing good and I'm doing like I'm I'm like I'm doing good in my life, you know. And, I, and then I was like, dude, that's that's pride because you're you're seeking this separation. You you wanna be better, like you you wanna be better, you wanna show them that like you're you're doing good in life, but you're seeking for this sure. validation, you know, for for, reason, yeah. for yeah, for a reason of like not wanting them to judge you or not wanting them to like look at you and be like, Oh, this person, this kid's like, I'm doing anything with his life. And I was like, that's pride, bro. Like, you know, I was noticing in myself, I was like, you're searching for that acceptance still. And I had to see that and how to work with that and be like, okay, you know, like it doesn't matter who I am. It doesn't matter how they perceive me. At least it doesn't matter what their opinion is of me. It's, it's how I accept myself, the quality, the quality of my life. Mm -hmm. um, but that was just an example that came up for me recently of this pride. So it's, it's just, for me, it's just this practice and like, learning how to cultivate compassion for myself. So I want to pass it to you guys. As you're speaking, I'm just going to plug in the charger real quick. So feel free to take the mic. Yeah, it's yeah. okay for you. Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so I was thinking, you know, I would be inclined to say most, if not all of these things stem from uh, separation. Like just thinking that, you know, you're separate from somebody else or you're separate from your experience in general. And then just realizing that like you're you're one with your experience and you're one with everybody else just brings everything down to like a really stable level. Because mm -hmm. I think Asava, you and I were talking earlier too that we were saying that um, the the ego or things try to prove on the outside that you are separate from right, something right. in order to confirm not, something not else. Things. Or you're, you had yourself. a way of saying it. You're yeah. Still. Go ahead, but yeah. finish. I, I, yeah. Well, that was it. Cause like, was it right there, yeah. but I, I wanted oh. to say, cause you had a really great way of saying it. Yeah. Let that, me see if I can yeah. turn into that. Uh, I was hearing two things. Basically what I'm hearing is um, there's love and then there's a call for love. So uh, in, right. in this experience, there's like loving experiences. And then what I call basically um, experiences that are calling for love. And that's, that call for love is where someone might use anger to disconnect themselves from the rest of the group. Oh, and I've oh. been there. I've dis I've disconnected myself because I'm like, my pride yeah. is fuck. <laughs> like just like I don't need anything. I don't need anyone. Right. Right. And but really right. like your your inner your inner child you're is like is wounded and it's like, oh, but you're really looking for the proof to someone to be like, you know what? I realized that you were angry mm. and I realized that you and intended on like separating yourself from the group and, and can you explain why like why did you intend on using your anger and it, like basically speak on like on why why things happened the way they did but yeah anger anger used in that way i think is a 
cutting yourself off like separating yourself and and because they maybe have been separated in some way like this victim this right. victim thing is coming up and oh. so we need to step up for them now there's people like us stepping up for them be like we have to give them the extra security the extra proof for like hey you aren't separate we are here for you like it's more than just because we can't put aside the covid you know we're they're destroying things that don't even matter now like people are worrying about the root chakra like what they're eating for dinner tonight you know they're not worried about the flat screen anymore so i mean people maybe i don't know yeah but yeah, like yeah. you know the, the the riots come at a time interestingly enough where like we're already breaking down like what it is to live every day and yeah like, what like... we're what we're depending on so like look at that like there's nothing there anymore like they're destroying like oh. you know you could buy all this stuff on credit cards what does that mean anymore you what know, is that? Bringing what's the, what is it like? It's bringing it attention to like what's real, like, yeah. Like, yeah. The matter, yeah. yeah. And and the separation exists so that you can see. Oh, it's not separate. It's not really separate. Well. It's not separate. Like we mm -hmm. within and like without, exactly. we have to help it's, each other so they yes. can see it too. And it's like a collective. Huh. Yeah, uh, yes, that leads me. If I can add value, like uh, to the questions, we can answer some questions right now. One yeah. of the questions that we got asked was, okay, how do we? Okay, then how do we? <laughs> should we and how do we find compassion for like white supremacists and like should we have compassion for these people because a lot of people say there shouldn't be compassion that they're doing wrong and they should be jailed and they should be like put away you know and uh should we have compassion for them and if if so how do we find compassion for people like that god bless me oh uh, yes I, I, go ahead go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> we go might ahead. be saying the same thing <laughs> i was okay, thinking please. like the first thing that comes into my head is kind of bless them because uh, they're playing their role very well uh, and they're uh, triggering people who they need to be triggering and they're doing the job they need to be doing. And, uh, but, but the white supremacy is beyond right. the skin color now. It's right. a label. That's white supremacy true. is a label and white people are showing us within their own community that, that you can be white totally. and not be a white supremacist. So as for those people that still are holding on to those ways, I'm sorry, but a lot of the world is really not there anymore. Like these people in position, yeah, there's like an authority problem here. Um, but a lot of people are like stepping up and um, I think m more willing to to kind of oh. to hold the space. And for sure. oh, right. I think it might be supremacy now instead of just white. Right. Supremacy. It's kind of like beyond just like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Beyond things. the label. Yeah. So yeah, well, and, and I wanted to add because it's it's also not, you know, for me, I'm not. It's not saying that like what they're doing is okay. You know, when we say they're playing their role, it's not like saying like oh what they're doing is right or like what they're doing is okay. But it's more so acknowledging that if this triggers you and you get angry like that, it's serving a purpose, right? Because it's serving a, a catalyst for you to create change in society, for you to want to do something about it. So. Mm -hmm. For me, when I see these uh, individuals serving their purpose or playing their role, what that means to me is that they're creating the right triggers for change to be instigated in society in the way that needs to be instigated in society and not validating or saying that what they're doing is right and that they should be doing that. Of course not, you know, but what I, what I feel I'm sharing is that there is a meta perspective here and that it's okay for you to feel angry you know it's okay for you it's to feel good. that you know and like in some ways like let yourself feel that but i feel like it's a matter of not letting that overcome you where you create separation from you and that person it's like understanding the reality that that person is you and that kind of gets me into the topic of like realizing that if you were in like this is a controversial thing i won't go too far into it but realizing that if you were that like if you were that person you'd be doing the same thing like if you were that person living that shoes, life in the like same shoes, same, same trauma, eyes. same experiences that like you would be doing that person. And a lot of times these, these, uh, a lot of us, you know, can't fathom doing anything like that, or we don't understand them. Like, why would they do something? Why would they kill an innocent person? Why would... And that's because like our experiences, our perspectives, we couldn't even fathom something like that because it doesn't, it's not part of our role. It's not part of our purpose. And um, just kind of like seeing that, like, Yes, I understand it's difficult to have compassion for people that make you feel angry and that are causing a lot of chaos in this world, a lot of what we can say is evil. But that was the next question. Is like, how do we find compassion and how do we find forgiveness for individuals like that? I think... And why is it important to even have forgiveness? Why is it important? I think it's important. Well, let's, let me begin with uh, the compassion. Right. I think um, the way we begin to have compassion for those people is... 
what I'm hearing is silence speaks. Mm -hmm. And in some ways right now, they already know. The people know and they're alone. Mm -hmm. They're alone in their experience. And the reason they go out and be sometimes I'm not saying I know, you know, I don't know. But what I'm feeling is that when these acts are coming out, what usually happens, they may be going home to a place that's not completely peaceful there's something happening right. and they're alone you know and i think that's where the compassion begins is like realizing that when they go home you have your group of people that are now standing with you and well, we're strong here because yeah we don't have to attack them but we do look at them and like kind of hold the space for them to just like bro look at yourself right now yeah. can you just like just take a moment to like look at yourself and yeah. and we'll be waiting here for you for you to like honestly step up and if you don't well that's what the law i guess law is for the sake of keeping freedom you know and that that's a, that could be a whole other topic right, right. but i think the compassion begins with with that is 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 understanding that they're trying to cut themselves off too mm. and we have to prove to them on some level that that's not true mm. but but the silence you know we don't have to use our words for anything but like we use this we use our words here for this man because that's empowerment and we yeah. stand up but we silence them we don't we hear them every time you hear it because it's like <laughs> oh really that's so interesting so you're saying because of this this happened and we actually you know that's mm -hmm. probably like a joking you actually have to like intend to like listen and like oh. hear people out because yeah. everybody's in a different place and, yeah, yeah and they're like probably willing to kill themselves think about exactly. that exactly if they're willing, if they're to, willing kill to kill themselves else, like oh, they sacrifice their life their life what they yeah. believe in then it's yeah. like whoa do you really want to like keep poking that exactly. that fire there's yeah. an eloquence in silence for sure yeah 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 you know i like how you guys share that like the importance of seeing the perspective in their shoes and even though that may be difficult for, for a lot of us because i know some of us you know just like, you know like, like f them you know like why should i even consider the perspective you know why should i even put myself in their shoes like they don't deserve that they don't even deserve my attention of even considering their compassion you know and i i sense that you know and i resonate um but i feel like the importance of compassion the importance of forgiveness is my experience is as soon as you throw out compassion, then you are creating the separation. And then that separation is an adding to the cycle of hatred in which we were just speaking about. So in a way you're then becoming like the monster that you're trying to run away from because now you are creating out separation out of defense. I need to prepare myself for the monster. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And you become the monster because now you're instigating more pride to be kind of created. Now you're creating this separation. Now you're, mm -hmm going back in the loop so i feel like as difficult as it may be and as triggering as it may sound you know but to find compassion and forgiveness does not mean that to accept what they're doing and to validate what they're doing is, is okay i think that's a huge misconception with forgiveness and with compassion it's like well are you telling me that it's okay that reason you know, you know are you saying that racism is okay and are you saying that you know th them killing you know this individual is oh it was okay you know like of course not that is never the approach to compassion or forgiveness forgiveness doesn't say it's okay what you did to me that you hurt me that you are hurting my people and then you create this of course not but what it's saying is that there is opportunity for us to take this and, and learn from it and grow from it and shift our perspective because every time we hold on to anger rage or resentment we're, we're really hurting ourselves the most and we're instigating more of the cycle of hatred you mm -hmm. know but any, anything else you want to add to that before we um, go to the next question yeah i think i'm glad that you pointed out the cycle of hatred there because i think yeah. being aware of a cycle and like like the cycle of life you know you plant a seed yeah, and it yeah. waters and it grows like these are things that work within us and we have to weed the garden nako says in his mm -hmm. music we have to yeah. weed our minds like uh, you know let grow what's going to grow naturally let the laws take in and just weed and take care of yourself take care of your mind and 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 notice when it's time to act on the outside and and it, you'll, your heart guides I, in my experience i feel that my heart guides me to wherever i set my intention and i'm like i don't know what this quite looks like but i understand that i'm here and i should express myself in this way and you know you're i feel we are guided to each other to to help and for ourselves yeah mm -hmm. there's a there's an inner guidance yeah i really feel it definitely mm -hmm. for, forgiveness doesn't mean that that uh, there's nothing there you know it actually means that there is something there and that you don't have to do it 
but you can do something about it. Mm. You know, mm. you don't have to reenact it, but you can absolutely take action. You know, well, it's all just, it's awareness. Yeah, you don't have to reenact. Mm. I think the, that's the pride. The, mm-hmm. the point of pride comes from when you're like, this was done to me. Yeah. This was done to me. And now I have to sort of respond in this way. But you can decide like, wait, who am I? Huh. Who am I? Do I just want to be, you know, responsive? Or can I really step into this space of like, whoa, let me just, you know, not turn the other cheek for the sake of being like a rug, you know, a doormat or but for the sake of just gathering your your self peace and be like you know what i'm gonna be a pillar for this world right now yeah i'm gonna just shine bright so that like people can you know you know yeah. and not for the sake of anybody on the outside but for the sake of yourself because sometimes the uncertainty is out there mm. and you gather within and you're just like let me let me go out and give light to my fellow right my fellow passengers out here <laughs> <We're> all passengers <laughs> on this journey yeah, so adding value to that because we're reaching that the Definitely. ending of the of the ceremony of the portal because we're reaching the hour mark. Um, but we basically answered all the questions that were asked for us when it came to um, like how can we are rights effective and should we go to them? We we didn't mention about like there's just, of course they're effective yes and there's different approaches to it whether we do peaceful rights or non peaceful rights um, they both serve their value and it's up to us to see how we want to serve and approach the situation. It's up to you to discern whether you feel like called to be in the physical, but we also shared that you could relieve yourself and not to feel an obligation to do so or feel bad. If you don't, you're still adding to society. You're still helping with the cause in the way that you need to. So just giving yourself that empowerment to know that there's different ways to approach it. Um, we also were asked, how can we find compassion? And we talked about that as about understanding the, the meta perspective, understanding the, the, The way to even evolve as a society is to step into that compassion. Um, The next question was, what is the solution to solving racism in our society? Uh, We mentioned that a little bit about, again, the meta perspective of seeing, well, evolution, this is what it looks like. It looks like us Mm -hmm. taking a stand. It looks like us speaking. It looks like us like going within. And and I shared my perspective of like real transformation started within, within the self. And when we hear our inner worlds, then that will be reflected in our outer worlds, our outer world. So what does that actually look like in society? Like, what are we actually looking for? I mean, it could be multiple things, right? It could be like establishing a new way of how to hire police officers and, and doing more maybe psychological like assessments, you know, more frequently. And like when it comes to the psychological developments, right? Because, you know, people who are, racists they have a psychological development that has told them that this is okay this is how i search for validation this is what i need to do to search for approval so how do we solve that in the long scheme of things well we need to get to the core of education get to the core of what's happening in the households of people because that's where all the trauma is created Mm -hmm. so then like there's more to it it's not so simple than just to fight and and pass some laws you know because this this isn't new right this has been happening for ages for like decades for a long time this isn't just like a simple solution so it's it's not going to be as simple as just trying to fight and then yell and be heard and seen it's about what this actually looks like in the development of the psychological process of humankind it's like what well, it's going to take establishments it's going to take healing and for me last thing i'll share is for me i'm a huge advocate for psychedelics and for the medicine that is held within the cell transformation so as psychedelics become legal in our society as we become more mainstream in these medicines and using a conscious ceremonial and, and and with integrity then i feel like that's really for me for me as a psychedelic advocate i feel like that there's a lot of healing there and they could really heal us as a collective right you have someone who's a white supremacist they sit with ayahuasca they see themselves and like oh my gosh look at all this trauma this is why i feel this way a few sessions later from psychotherapy with some integration then boom they change their mindset they change their lives their persona shifts and uh that's just you know that's just one way and i feel like we could to ultimately create more of that but um before we get to closing thoughts and closing ceremony do you have anything to share on that when it comes to what this looks like uh solution you know yeah sure sure visionary mindset i think um what was it that you hit on um you said uh real quick she was kind of tried screaming and yelling before yeah i've been going on for a while yeah Yeah, it's been happening before the oh like the racism um what was it maybe do you want to say yeah i mean yeah. yeah i was gonna say that you know it just had a point like we have done that many many times and i think now it's to a point where uh 
we all can have new habits and new awareness. COVID has given us a chance to all That's take a nice. seat right. and hang out and look at ourselves. And now we need to integrate our new habits and that's going to appear on the inside and it's going to appear in our immediate reality mm -hmm. and it's going to appear in the collective and, you know, government yeah. and big things like that. And I think it's all like, you know, let's choose, let's see if we, we want to go with new habits, you yeah. know, not saying everybody should, whatever, but like if there are, if you would like to, that might be a good path. Yes. Yeah. 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 Be be good point. You basically re refresh it. Yeah. And, and coming back, I think the, the point was COVID is kind of showing us that we, we have the power, like everybody yeah. here is like, okay, so the point is not work. What happens when the point is not work? Okay. The point is not work. Mm -hmm. The point is food. Okay. I'm hungry now okay now the essentials are the people that serve my food every day oh damn that's crazy like <laughs> wow, what happens when the people who are essential are supported that means where's well, jobs and that you know like yeah. i think covid and the mindset around it is like look the power is like you you have the power and the illusion is like that you don't yeah. the illusion that it's like slightly out of your it's slightly out of your grip your grasp and and it's like well a lot of people actually stepped up to to, to riot probably sure. and hold the space safely for the riders because like well what are we doing today oh yeah COVID's happening like right. <laughs> maybe we'll grab a smoothie and head to the ride how about that yeah. you know okay, and it's right. like because what matters what That's actually important. matters really what's important right now. now and jobs and the thing I left back and when I left my job back there that didn't matter at all like mm -hmm. these these things they matter on some level everybody has a th a th things that matter but COVID's yeah. like what matters most exactly and it's also like you know people need you know realizing that we have the power here with we live kind of in northern california most of the time and we're <laughs> like um you know within a week people at the grocery stores somebody who i saw at a grocery store who was a cashier or something like yeah. that she was very shy very soft-spoken was super sweet but um within a like what two days a week maybe of covid she was at the doors like do you have a mask can it can i get you hand sanitizer you know she everybody like really got their power it was not policemen in the grocery store it was the employees was the in the employees grocery store have it right and when you have a purpose yeah. and you know what you're doing you can do it with ease and confidence and mm -hmm. you know she was super empowered and i went into the store i, I my mask's in my pocket i i didn't know whether i had to have it on or not because there was no yeah. sign yet she was like she can you please boring. have your mask she on cool. she and she feels like she has yeah, she wants to help. yeah exactly you know, that's it. She wants to help so everybody. i i think that you know the people who are essential are learning how essential they are and how we don't need swat teams inside our houses mm -hmm. we can just have general public regulation you know so everybody can be chill together most people want to be know? home at night time. exactly I mean, yeah it's we all kind of want like we all kind of want the same thing here pretty much at the same yeah. time <laughs> <laughs> i think that's the thing that's grounding us in we all want to eat about once or twice a day yeah like, like oh, can we snap. all agree okay i want to get to my bed tonight okay yeah i want to have like loving experiences yeah. you know i want to feel connected to my community I maybe i want to garden <laughs> maybe like you know i'm grounding into more things Things that the root is like i'm grounded really in to, yeah. to trust the people around me and to be supported by our government you know to be supported for the essentials yeah. and i think that's kind of what's happening is like we shouldn't have to suffer to survive like just to be like yes. you know we shouldn't be like working 80 hour shifts just to live you know and, and what we were right, saying earlier right, trump right. should be there or whoever the president is should be there just for the business to make money she was kind of to make was, money this was an idea that yeah we had this point. morning so she's like what if trump just like was the business because you know business the united states is a business yeah like he what if we left the business decisions to that? <laughs> yeah left the business decisions but to the president the laws up to the community the exactly involved in the communities and let the people stand up and i think community i think right? people riot against the law because people mm -hmm. feel the separation there's a lot there's a separation mm -hmm. between i'm a police officer and you're a civilian you know stand in yeah. place and then civilians feel restricted and when you feel restricted everybody's got the mm. inner rebel you want to come out you're like oh i can't go play so, basketball yeah that makes me want to play mm, basketball yeah. 10 times more than i wanted to yesterday <laughs> and i normally do and i don't really even want to play basketball and i never played basketball where did basketball <laughs> come from like, but now like you're making a thing <laughs> you want to go out right now you want to go right yeah like, i feel like that's a that's a good topic for another portal because we could definitely dive deep, deeper into how business right. sometimes bleeds into inequality right because business deals sometimes it does create separation <laughs> right like the economy is relevant to uh, business when it comes to uh, the environment and sometimes 
business deals are very uh, unfairly correlated to the rights of the people. Well, that's another portal. That's another portal. Before you know, we go into that, I want to do some closing remarks. First of all, I want to thank all of you guys. If you have watched this full replay of this live stream, I want to give you a huge shout out, you know, for being open-minded and receiving our perspectives and receiving our value and what we had to share on these topics and what's going on right now. Um, you know, the word apocalypse, uh, you know, means revealing. So in some ways we're like in this apocalyptic state where a lot of things are being revealed to us, a lot of truths. And if you were triggered uh, during this episode or if you didn't agree or if you did, there was a like, man, these guys don't know what they're saying, you know, all that, that's good. Look at that. You know, I offer you the opportunity to look at that and to see that within yourself and uh, to use that as an opportunity to heal as, as well. Um, but I, I give you thanks for being open-minded and I'm grateful for all of us ultimately we're all here looking to achieve the same thing in my perspective which is just liberation which is community which is love to be seen heard and to uh, belong and uh some closing remarks i want to say that um the people's true character comes out in times of challenges and when things get challenging you get to see people's true character and how they really respond so and this time, you know, sometimes that is revealing, sometimes that's concerning, sometimes that's disappointing, sometimes that's inspiring to see how everyone responds and how everyone reacts to the triggers, to the shadow, to all these things going on, you know. So just observe that within yourself, observe that within your community, um, and use this as an opportunity to continue to speak up in the way that you feel called in the way that you can offer value um, I want to share that you guys are so powerful, that we are powerful. We are the generation that is changing the world, that together we can rise and not to bypass our emotions, but to sit with them, work with them, and to open up uh, with the level of discernment, you know, and receive what's necessary. And I want to give all of you guys love because we're all working through this together. Um, I know that I don't know. That's the philosophy that Socrates has gifted me. And I know that I really don't know. And I'm just sharing what I can from my heart space and i hope that you continue to do the same as well so thank you for being on this portal cast before we close this portal officially any final notes any final words any final, final sayings you have for the for our generation behind the screen no i don't that's so funny i think i felt you get something and i was like oh. it's because we're like when we we're, yeah like, uh, i think we, <laughs> we're like uh, <laughs> <laughs> but share the collective space i think uh we were speaking on you know, unconditional love, non-judgment, forgiveness, and I'm forgetting the fourth, but this is going to be like, I think, interesting okay. and, 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 and compassion. 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 So unconditional love, compassion, forgiveness, forgiveness. Forgiveness. compassion forgiveness. Yeah, those four, yeah. consider those, like, I think is, is key, like, as we're moving forward. Um, and I think there's something... Um, something about that with the men that I'm feeling like men and women, you know, what am I saying? We're both, we're mm -hmm. both, we all need it, but like, we all have, we have to support each other at different points. You know, sometimes it's time for someone to stand up and, and for us to listen, you know, it's mm -hmm. time to listen to them. And then it's for us time for us to stand up and then maybe someone needs to support us. So mm -hmm. learning to flow with when it's time to listen, when it's time to act and yeah yeah that's, yeah. Good. that's good discernment. and definitely those not being the you know unconditional love uh, you know like that kind of thing it's like the real yeah. the actual unconditional love the actual yeah. find it in your heart compassion <laughs> you know the deep that's the deep emotions hard, not yeah. the surface like peace and love yeah yeah i like that you know not bypassing with peace and love because there's action that's needed there's you know that difficult the difficult processing of anger that needs to be felt and there is radical action that needs to be taken you know so it's not just this peace and love let's not really think about it let's just look at the unicorn and rainbows in our lives and just pretend that like, this is what we need to like of course mm -hmm. not it's, we're, we're shifting that stigma and we're offering a new perspective of what it means to cultivate compassion and, and make change in society so thank you for, for bringing that up yeah i think uh, also we let those those people that want to like just just you know meditate off into the yeah and they, and they then they you know, there's like you said there's integration on it yeah and i think the people that are here for the integration are here for the integration true very true yeah. and there's some people yeah. that maybe they're like for some reason way beyond you know maybe way way beyond and they're just ready to like to go yeah be in harmony with yeah. love itself sure. <laughs> yeah, that, serves, that serves its purpose yeah in some, in some ways yeah but uh 
mostly I think a lot of us are here to immigrate and for sure. yeah, figure it out together. <laughs> yeah, we're on earth, right? Yeah. So with that being said, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate you guys. And uh, wherever you are behind the screen, if you want to join me in this closing kind of meditation as we kind of tune in, as you receive, as you process, as you self-inquire, maybe things have come up for you in this episode that you wanted to sit with a little more, maybe perspective has shifted. And I trust that this episode has offered you value to help you see just different perspectives that we got to share with you today. So with that being said, if you want to tune in as we close this ceremony, slowly closing your eyes, relaxing the shoulders and taking in a deep breath as we inhale through the nose. Hold in the breath, relax the body. And slowly exhale out through the mouth. Tuning into this moment, inhaling again through the nose. Holding in the breath. And exhaling out through the nose. Relaxing a little more and taking in one more breath, the deepest breath you've taken all day as you inhale in through the nose. And slowly exhaling out. <laughs> salud, salud. <laughs> and with that, if you feel called to like, to subscribe, to share this video with someone, if you have found value, Follow us and continue us on our quest at Stay Risen. We appreciate you. If you want to support us, please support us on Patreon. Subscribe to our newsletter. We will be having clothing soon if you want to continue to support us in that way. We love you. We appreciate you. We're here for you. We're in this together because together we rise. We send you love as a generation that's changing the world. We are grateful to stand up and speak our truth and we empower you to do the same. We will see you in another portal. We'll see you in another quest from our portal to your portal. Peace and love officially closing this portal. Stay risen. Ah, close the portal.